We've got big breaking news coming in here on India today. Terrorist ranks in the Kashmir Valley are a buzz now with chatter about a serious rift between Hezbollah commander Zakir Musa and the leadership of the Hezbollah Mujahideen. Radio and mobile chatter intercepted by India's intelligence agencies in the aftermath of the killing of Sabzar Bhatt in Tral, South Kashmir, have revealed a serious rift and chatter that could reveal a possible betrayal in the ranks. I want to go straight across to India's uh, India Today's managing editor, Rahul Kaval, for more on this. Uh, Rahul, a huge rift within the Hezbollah Mujahideen. What are you hearing? Uh, Shiv, there seems to be an all-out terrorist versus terrorist war in Kashmir. Multiple interceptions in uh, Okay, we have a bit of an audio problem there with Rahul. We'll try and re-establish that uh, in just a moment. But uh, let me just take our viewers through what this big breaking story is. Uh, remember that what we're hearing from our sources and the intelligence agencies is that a lot of radio intercepts, audio intercepts of conversations between senior leadership uh, of the Hezbollah Mujahideen and Zakir Musa have been intercepted. Uh, radio and mobile chatter intercepted by India's intelligence agencies apparently reflect a high level of distrust between former Hezbollah commander Zakir Musa and the terror outfit he had led until recently. Well, in the aftermath of the encounter of the killing of Burhan Wani's successor Sabzar Bhatt, Indian agencies have recorded multiple conversations. Rahul is back with us. Rahul, take us through these conversations and what they reveal. Uh it seems as an all-out terrorist versus terrorist war that's broken out in the Kashmir Valley. Uh, on the 10th of May, we saw Zakir Musa come out with an audio tape in which he said Hurriyat leaders should be publicly beheaded in uh, downtown Srinagar. He announced he was breaking away from the Hezbul Mujahideen and he announced that he was pledging allegiance to an Islamic caliphate. Since then, it seems that the United Jihad Council, yes. which is a conglomerate of terrorist organizations, uh, including the Hezbollah Mujahideen in Pakistan, which is funded and run by the ISI, that's in deep panic. They want, uh, they want Zakir Musa, uh, they, they want this person to be killed. And what it also seems uh, from these intercepts is that in Sabzar's death, terrorists themselves are suspecting that maybe Musa's men went and gave that tip off to the Jammu and Kashmir police. Remember, mm. Sabzar was killed in Thral, yes. which is his hometown, very close to Thral. And this is coming from, this, there's no confirmation from any of the intelligence agencies about whether there was a tip off from within the terrorist ranks or not. So that's not confirmed. But terrorists themselves suspect that Zakir Musa's men went and tipped off the Jammu and Kashmir police. So essentially, you've got Zakir Musa on the one side, people with him who owe allegiance to the Islamic State, and you've got the Hezbollah Mujahideen uh, backed by the ISI on the other side. Naturally, the ISI and Sayyid Salahuddin would not want that uh, the more hardline, right-wing, hardcore elements take over who pledge allegiance to the Islamic State because these are people who are funded by the ISI. Yes. They don't want to see control shift. Absolutely. So this is like a power struggle, uh, you know, that was perhaps inevitable, but we're seeing it actually play out. So this is the first real evidence of those cracks within the Hezbollah Mujahideen, Rahul. Oh, absolutely. Because this could potentially change uh, the ISI's control over what's happening in Jammu and Kashmir. Yeah. If the terrorists break away and they pledge their allegiance like Zakir Musa has done to a larger Islamic caliphate, then it's out of the ISI's control. They don't want that. And therefore, there are two or three things. It's very interesting. There are multiple audio conversations which seem to suggest that the terrorists themselves suspect that Zakir Musa is the one uh, who had word sent out to the Jammu and Kashmir police. And that's how Sabzar, who was Zakir's replacement, was killed in that encounter. Now, that's very, very interesting. These just show the kind of mind games that are going on in the terrorist ranks. There's a lot of distrust. Yes. Because suddenly you've got somebody who's been your commander who breaks away from the valley and naturally his controllers in the ISI and terrorists like Sayyid Salahuddin are very, very uncomfortable about what that could mean for terrorism in Kashmir. Thanks very much, Rahul. Huge exclusive report that we'll be fleshing out uh, in the hours ahead right here on India Today. We're going to get you some of those conversations and the specifics of this terrorist versus terrorist fight that's broken out uh, amidst the most the, 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 the principal terror organization functioning in the Kashmir Valley, the Hezbollah Mujahideen, funded, of course, by the ISI. But here's a power struggle we now have concrete proof of. Huge story adding to the mix 
of what's happening in Jammu and Kashmir. We'll take that story forward. Rahul, thanks for the moment.